5,000. A big number used to describe big things. The weight of an African elephant in pounds. Or the cost of just one Airbnb bath at the exclusive Victor Hotel in Miami. It's the distance the proclaimers would have walked if they sang that chorus just one more time. Da -da -da -da. And the amount of people that Jesus was said to feed with just one fish and some bread. But I eat a whole loaf of bread whenever I have fish and chips. So it's probably a good thing I wasn't in that crowd. My southern mates would say five bags. My German mates would say fun thousand. And to my Brazilian followers, it's cinco mil. Tudo bem, and thanks for watching. Whatever your language and wherever you're from, I think that we can all agree that 5,000 of anything is a lot. So in honor of hitting this milestone, we're gonna do a quick Q&A and I'm gonna give away a bit of money, see if we can make someone's Christmas that extra bit special. Let's get it. I don't want to be self-serving and sit here gushing to you all about how I never expected to have so many subscribers so soon. It's not my style. You don't need to hear it, and let's face it, I'm hardly PewDiePie. But I do think these types of milestones are a really good way for me to show my appreciation for the support all you guys have shown in the last six months. So thank you so much for all of your kind words of support, your questions, and just for being a lovely bunch of human beings. Now let's get on with the Q&A. So on my Instagram, I asked you to submit some questions. I got quite a lot of questions, so I apologize that I'm not gonna be able to answer them all today. I picked out a few. Um, some of them, a lot of people ask. Some of them I just thought were quite interesting. Some of the questions I've had to admit because they were pretty rude. How many inches? It's pretty cold in the loft. But what I will do is in the comment section below, I'll put a list of all of the questions with my answers. So any ones that I didn't answer this time, I am sorry, but down below for the answer. Okay, let's whip out the phone. Not gonna throw it around this time. She's okay though. So let's first of all start with the most common questions that I received. So a lot of people asked, what did you do at uni? Not very much is the answer to that question. Now, I mean, in all seriousness, I went to Durham University, which is in the Northeast of England near Newcastle. Um, it's famous for being one of the sets of Harry Potter. I'll put an image up, it's a beautiful place. I did business and finance there, which might not come as a shock to many people. But in reality, I was just one of those guys that got really drunk for three years and didn't really pay much attention. I came out with a degree. I could have done a lot better if I'd have worked harder. And to be honest, I went into the degree to do business studies because in my naive little brain, I wanted to learn how to set up businesses and how to invest. I came out the other side uh, with the limited lectures that I did go to not knowing a single thing about either of those things. I have thoughts on education and how it's structured, but in reality, I went into that business degree with expectations that it was gonna be something that it just wasn't. It's funny now though that years later, I study probably all of the things that I should have just paid attention to in class. So the next question. Again, a few people asked, what do you do for a day job? So it may come as no surprise to anyone that I work in finance. I work for a tax specialist accountant so essentially, it's an accountancy firm that helps people with their tax. Before that, I sold investments, um, mainly to overseas clients like Arabs and uh, Ch the Chinese market. And before that, I worked in debt and finance. So I helped people get out of debt and made people bankrupt and stuff like this. So if you guys want content on managing debt, improving your credit rate, and I literally did that for about five or six years. So I can make some content along those lines as well if you think it'll be helpful. But yeah, nothing too exciting. I'm not a spy. I am literally just a guy who works for an accountancy firm. Okay, next question. So I'm gonna butcher all of these Instagram tag names. I'm sorry about that. Findlay underscore Adams 147 said, would you ever buy Bitcoin? I do own Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one of those things. It, it's not an investment in my eyes. It's a complete gamble. It's either gonna become the biggest thing ever or it's gonna fade into nothing. So if you're sat there thinking, should I buy a bit of Bitcoin? You really gotta go at it with that mindset. It's all or nothing. It's like playing a game of roulette. I bought Bitcoin at the start of the year and it's done really well. It's like, you know, doubled in price in that time. That doesn't mean I think that Bitcoin is a good investment now though. Honestly, it's a complete Hail Mary, like roll the dice investment. But I do like the fact that the markets are open seven days a week. So it gives me something to obsess over on a Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so next question. Jacob Connolly asked, why did you invest in Boohoo and not the airlines instead? Good question. To be honest with you, I have invested in the airlines. My biggest airline holding is EasyJet. The reason I bought into airlines is the same logic that everyone else has probably got. At some point, 
air travel will return and at that point it's likely that we'll see those share prices jump. The reason I didn't tell you guys about it was because I thought that Boohoo was a better video. I mean the thought process behind Boohoo was a little bit more complicated I would say than just simply well planes are going to return, shares will go up. The Boohoo stuff had multifaceted angles to it that I thought I could let you in on my thought process with that. That's the only reason I spoke about Boohoo and not say EasyJet at the time. I do own both. Okay so next question. Right so my phone is mangled, so it's a bit hard to read some of these. Hoys underscore Jacob, so Jacob, asked, what's the worst stock you've ever bought? Right, um, the one that springs to mind is something called the Neil Woodford scandal. I've spoken about it briefly in a few videos, but basically this was the reason that I left Hargreaves Lansdowne as a platform, because it just left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. Look up Neil Woodford, he was considered the best investor in British history. They called him like the British Warren Buffett. And basically he set up on his own and had a managed fund. Hargreaves Lansdowne pushed this fund to everyone quite aggressively. And well, let's just say it didn't really work out. Neil Woodford lost loads of money. Um, his investors got trapped into the fund and couldn't get their money out. And they're only just now getting some of those funds back. And some people, you know, if you put a thousand pound in, they're getting like under 300 quid back out. That was the worst investment I've ever made. I put, I mean, at the time it wasn't loads. I put like three, 400 quid into it. But what that taught me was, don't trust other people with my money. Just because a managed fund has a, a fund ma manager, just because a managed fund has a fund manager that has a great track record for delivery, doesn't mean that he will continue to do so. What happened with Neil Woodford was, he got arrogant and cocky and thought he could invest in stuff that was a bit out there and it just blew up in his face. It was at that point that I decided, right, I'm, I'm not doing managed funds anymore. I will only really look at index funds or individual businesses that I've picked out for myself. Good question. Thank you for that. The next question is from my guy, Veloci. So Veloci runs a gaming channel. Um, you can see it here. And he basically asked, what is the one stock that you wish you'd bought and what is your favourite dinosaur? He makes dinosaur gaming content. So the one stock I wish I'd bought, wow. I mean, honestly, go back 20 years and pick anything you like. So one that springs to mind is probably Microsoft. Because when I first started investing, I looked at Microsoft and thought, ah, damn, I missed the boat there. If I'd have just bought Microsoft at that time, I would have smashed it. Another one is ASOS. So I always knew that ASOS was a good business when I first saw it. You obviously know now that I've invested into Boohoo. A little bit of the whole Boohoo thing is the fact that you know, I'm sore about the fact I missed out with ASOS back in the day. Again, that stock moved so far. I think at one point the returns were like a thousand percent. So if you put a quid in, you'd have a grand. I'm not sure about that. I might just be making that up completely, but it was ridiculous gains. Indeed. In terms of dinosaurs, Petrie from the Land Before Time. I fly. What a gangster. And Denver, the last dinosaur. He's my Honestly, I think I'm probably the only person in the world that knows who Denver is. If you know who Denver the Last Dinosaur is, make yourself known in the comments. I need to know that I'm not alone in the world. Right, next question comes from Dan, whose handle is dan.an.an. And he said, would you say that you have made it in life? Honestly, Dan, the last thing I made was a crumpet this morning. This is probably my favourite question because it sums up a mindset that I think most of us have that we sit there on YouTube and we watch these people and they start to grow their channels and stuff and we think, wow, they have made it. Honestly, Dan, I'm sat here in my loft, freezing. I've got no socks on, so my feet are super cold and I'm just filming these videos, making them and putting them out. The one thing I would say is for the first time in my life, it feels like I have something that is truly mine that I'm passionate about and that is a lovely feeling. But am I financially set? Could I stop working right now and retire? Hell no. But I have spent a large proportion of my life searching for something, not knowing what it was, just looking frantically around to find something that would ultimately define who I am. And I'm starting to feel like maybe I might have found that thing. And one thing I'd say to you guys is, if you're sat there now frantically searching and you don't understand what your thing is or where you're meant to go or what you're meant to be doing, don't worry about it. It's taken me years to get to this point and everything that I've done over the course of my life has converged to this one point to give me the skills to be able to sit here in my freezing cold loft talking to you about money. All the jobs I've had, all the money I've lost, all of the time in my early 20s where I was just a hot mess. We'll talk about that another time. All of it has led to this point. 
So even if you don't feel like you're on the right path, you don't understand that the steps that you're treading right now are taking you to the place that you need to be to one day define who you are. So just keep doing what you're doing, keep your eyes open for opportunity, and if something comes your way that sparks your interest, just go for it. And if you like it, if you're passionate about it, just double down on that thing. Because it's passion that shines through, that makes people's work seem special, and it's that natural passion that you have for something that makes you want to do it. You will find something at some point that you love, I promise. And I guess, to answer your question, Dan, I think you've made it in life if you do something every day that you love. And at the minute, I am doing that. So I guess to answer your question, yes, I have made it. So the next question is from magicmage.eonar, E-O-N-A-R. Again, sorry if I've just butchered that, mate. So he asks, do you have any hobbies? Um, yeah, so... I used to like going to the gym, but honestly, I've not been for 12 months and it shows. So come Wednesday, I'm getting back in the gym. I like to lift weights and have a swim. That's kind of my thing. Uh, I don't want to sit here and say all the boring stuff like hanging out with my mates, but you know, I love seeing all my mates and stuff and getting fully involved into personal finance. I've always been worried about saying that personal finance is a hobby to people before because they look at you like, you shouldn't be obsessed with money, mate. You care too much about money. But I enjoy personal finance. I like the process of watching it grow, of investing. You know, that's what's led me here. So in the past, it's always been kind of a dirty secret that my obsession in life is money. But that's the truth. My hobby is investing. My hobby is personal finance. Before I even press record on one of these videos, I probably spent a thousand hours watching YouTube content on the subject. I like my cat, my missus, listening to music. And every so often, I'll play a computer game. I like to play Rome Total War. I can hear something moving in the loft. It's really freaking me out. Oh, no, it's just a breeze moving the paper. I had an incident up here with a mouse once where it was like, I don't know, we were just squaring up to each other and all got a bit heated. We shook it off afterwards, both had a beer and now he's my mate. We play football on a Friday, but yeah. There's a lot of noises in this loft and it scares the crap out of me sometimes. <laughs> okay, next question so we can get out of here. Emma Lovell underscore 93 asks, what made you become a YouTuber? I like this question. Right, so I touched on uh, this with Dan's question about, you know, have I made it or not, about searching for something. But it, really, I spent a lot of time watching personal finance content on YouTube, probably like a lot of you guys, but like I really liked it. So I did a lot of the whole Graham Stephan, Andre Jick, uh, financial education and Ryan Scribner over in America, but found a lot of that content was really just aimed at the American market. So while it's interesting to listen to and can give you ideas, they don't talk about the specific mechanics of like, you know, ISAs and things that we have here. So that led me into people like Mama Furfa, The Humble Penny, Money Unshackled. And while all of those guys have amazing channels, I just felt there was a bit of a gap for someone my age who also, you know, I just wanted the content to be a little bit more, you know, engaging, really. I don't, I don't mean to knock their content at all, but I just felt there was space for someone to have a bit of personality into the content and not just always focus on the facts, which there is definitely a market for, but I just wanted to watch content or I just wanted to make content that was the kind of content that I wanted to watch. So fast forward six months and I'm in my loft throwing my phone about putting silly beats onto songs and saying, let's get it all the time. I think in business, one lesson that they teach you is if you see a hole in the market, if you think that there's something for a product that isn't being served already, go and make that product. And I think with YouTube, the key thing is if you can look at a niche and think, I can add something to this niche that isn't already there and the niche already gets a lot of traffic, you will do well. All you need to be is different to everyone else and there'll be a proportion of the people watching that content that like your version of different. Thankfully, 5,000 people so far have liked my version of different legends. And the last question was, how old are you? Now, rather than answering this question myself, I'm going to put it to you. And that leads us on to today's giveaway. So I'm going to give away 200 quid. Now, I want you guys to help me to decide as well. So in the comments below, when you put the answer for the question, I'd like you to put whether you think we should give away one prize of 200 pounds to one lucky individual, or we should split it down into four prizes of 50 quid. So I'll give out, I'll give 50 pounds to four people. Just let me know in the comments below. I'll pick the most popular answer. I couldn't decide, so I'll put it up to you. So all, all you need to do to be in a chance of winning 
is tell me what you think my age is. So in the comments below, just put a number and then anyone who's got the right answer will be entered into a draw and the prize will be announced in two weeks or the winner will be announced in two weeks, at which point I'll just send you the money straight away. Now, the key thing is here, guys, remember the lighting, which is just here, is very kind to me. <laughs> if you haven't already guessed by all my really dated memes and weird references towards Dumb and Dumber and stuff like that, I'm probably a little bit older than you thought. But to give you a hint, I'm old enough to remember what this noise is. Mm, it's like music to my... Mom, get off the phone, I'm on the internet. 